Welcome viewers, you're watching the continuous coverage of Sunset Television of India's P20 as P20 is being hosted by India, mother of democracy from the iconic venue Yashobumi. And joining us right now is a very special guest, President of Senate of Netherlands, Mr. Brown. So welcome Sunset TV and thank you so much for joining us. So let's begin talking about P20. We heard Indian Prime Minister gave a very, very meaningful address uh, we've also been talking about the role of parliament in addressing the global challenge. It is very closely linked with the G20 presidency. And in India's G20 presidency, the focus was on a number of important issues. Going ahead, how do you think that parliaments across the world can actually converge together to find solutions to global problems? Well, uh, first of all, Mr. Misha, thank you very much for having me on your show. Pleasure having you, sir. And it's a great honor for our country, the Netherlands, to be uh, present here uh, at the P20. We are not member even of the yes. P20. We are special guests of uh, India. So we are very thankful uh, to be invited here and to be present. Because for a small country like, like the Netherlands, it's very important to be part of the international network and to be a close ally and friend of strong and big countries like your country, India. So that's especially a reason why we are so happy to be here. Now you asked me about P20. Uh, as parliamentary speakers of the G20, uh, we come together every year in the, in the context of the G20, as you know. And those meetings are very important for us because, uh, as you alluded to, the main topics of this meeting, which were uh, uh, laid out this morning by Prime Minister Modi, in an excellent way and I was very honored to meet your Prime Minister and very inspired uh, by talking to him also personally this morning. He took the time for us and he, he knew a lot about our country. Uh, he recently met our Prime Minister during the G20. So I was very inspired uh, by the leadership of your uh, um, exquisite uh, Prime Minister. And he laid out the, the, the main topics for this meeting. Um, uh, and maybe before we go into more detail in those topics, they are all topics which, which can be addressed in an efficient way only by doing it in international cooperation. For instance, if we look at climate change, which is one of those topics, um, we as a small country, for instance, of course, can take many measures for climate change. You as a big country can do the same. Your impact will be bigger on climate than, our, than the impact of our small country. But both of us cannot do it alone. Yeah, that's uh, true. If we would be the only country to take such measures, then nothing would happen in the rest of the world. So it's typically an example where you can make a change only by cooperating in an international and preferably a global level. And it's really important because if we want to leave the climate, uh, to, to leave yeah, the climate in, in a healthy way to our children, to next generations, we must take this, this action. It's not an academic discussion. That's right. And we must do it together. So that's part of the answer. Absolutely. We have to do it together, sir. So I'd also like to talk about India's G20 presidency. Now, it is being hailed as uh, a historic presidency. We had over 112 outcomes, the presidency documents. And we've tried to find solution and forge consensus on a lot of contemporary issues facing the world right now. So, how do you see India's G20 presidency? Well, the presidency is clearly very effective. And that has to do with um, both the logistics, uh, to start with the organization of these meetings, the G20 and the P20 are um, really very excellent. And the presidency as uh, exerted by India is an example to all of us. Um, and um, second of all, it's because of the themes that were chosen um, we already discussed in some detail climate, but another theme that was chosen is the diversity, uh, the gender diversity uh, uh, in general and more specifically in parliaments. And if, if you allow me to say a bit more about that. Please go ahead. Uh, looking at my own um, place, uh, I'm president of the Dutch Senate. Sir. We have 75 members in our Senate. We have a bicameral system. And it's only 100 years ago that in the Dutch Senate, the first woman senator was entered. Uh, I, had a, I had a picture made uh, of her last year. It was 100 years ago then, because I, th I think it was a very important uh, event, um, but also sad because um, it's so late that we started thinking about representation of people in a representative way. And if we want to uh, keep 
um, support in society for our democratic processes, which are the fundamentals of our freedom and our, our health and our welfare, then representation must be true representation. Uh, so it's only 100 years ago that the first senator entered the Senate in the Netherlands. It took 17 years before the second uh, female senator was entered, uh, entered the Dutch Senate. In the first few years of that first senator, uh, she was not spoken to by many of the senators who were all men because they thought it was not necessary yeah. for a female senator. We cannot believe that anymore nowadays, but it's only 100 years ago, so we still should feel ashamed. And uh, currently in our Senate, we are up to 40% women. So it's not enough. It should be at least 50%. It should be representation of uh, what is happening uh, in our country. Uh, so we still have that discussion. And two weeks ago, we were uh, convening with the uh, speakers of the uh, parliaments of the um, Council of Europe in Dublin, in Ireland. And I was allowed to give a speech there. And I called upon my colleagues to have a discussion, each in their own country, uh, not, so, not only with our colleagues and our um, members of parliament, but also with the leaders and the presidents of the political parties. Right. Because in our systems, that is where the recruitment of new parliamentarians takes That's place. Right. That is where the lists are made for the, uh, for the voters to choose between. So that is where the, where the diversity starts. So um, I would like to take this opportunity also maybe for those who are watching, that if they think about making new list of um, uh, 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 people for the for the different elections at different levels, that uh, they that, that the uh, members in parliament should speak with the political parties and urge them to have diversity in those lists. Uh, absolutely, sir. And since we're talking about the parliamentary developments across the world, sir, I'd like to mention about India. Recently, we saw the passage of a very important bill providing greater representation to women in parliament and also in state legislative assemblies. It is called the Nari Shakti Vandan Adhiniyam. That seeks to provide greater representation and greater voice in the political arena to women. How do you see this move of India? It's a very important move. I think the bill is about 30%. 33%. 33% yes, as a basis. Uh, so it's an important first step. Um, uh, and I think it is a very necessary step because, uh, as I said, um, from my point of view, looking at the parliament, um, the, the parliament, in order to gain and keep trust in society for democracy, uh, the parliament should really be representative of the people. That, not, that um, involves not only uh, women and men, but of course more diversity, more access of diversity. Yes. But uh, to have a bill such as you have in India, I think is wonderful to at least make sure uh, by law that at least 30% of members of parliament are women. women. And I hope that it will be 50% soon. And I hope that also for our country, because we are in the same stage, I think. That's right, sir. And before we wrap up, sir, tell us about your experience so far in India. Well, um, I arrived uh, yesterday. And um, I was greeted yesterday uh, by uh, a famous Bollywood actor who is also a member of parliament and he's also a singer. So we had a great time because one of my hobbies is playing piano and singing. Wonderful, wonderful. So, so we talked about that. And then I met uh, so many friendly people here and I saw so much culture, I saw dancing, I saw music. I saw the excellent organization of this whole meeting in this beautiful new venue. So I'm very much impressed by your country by the friendliness, by the organization, by your prime minister, um, and by all the things that I saw, and especially by the culture, which is in the heart of the people. Thank you so much, sir. Truly pleased to hear that, that you're enjoying your stay. Have a great stay in India, sir. And thank you so much for joining us on Sunset Television. Thank you for having me. Well, viewers, uh, that's from Yashabumi. Back to the GRG studio.